managers really not get about performance testing. And so I had some ideas, I'm sure you guys have some ideas as well. Um, I think mine really fit into three main areas, and someone brought it up earlier, which is this idea that, sorry, number one is this idea that hardware fixes everything. Like, you know, hey, you put it in the cloud and you have auto scaling turned on and your problem solved. Why, why would you need to test it? Because you've got auto scaling. Um, that happened at Click Frenzy um, because they go, you know, hey, we, got, we had a lot of servers. We don't understand why it fell over. Um, that happened at my school. Um, in the newspaper, they go, oh, we, we got really big servers and our host said it would be all fine. Um, we didn't, <coughs> didn't test it. Um, and so I think, you know, I, I like to say that performance or load related issues, which might not be just slow performance, it might be, hey, you get errors under load, which people never think about. They could be related to three areas. So you've got code, slow code, memory leaks, blah, 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 um, capacity, so hardware, or compi. And it could be any of those three areas, you could throw a lot of capacity at it, but you've got bad config, so all your servers are running at 10% CPU, but they're all bottlenecking that you, don't, you haven't allocated enough threads in the thread pool or something like that. Um, so that's number one. Um, number two, uh, especially test managers think that performance testing can be managed and treated like functional testing. And they're so totally different, but they're both testing, you've got test cases, um, properties of functional testing. You can do this stuff in parallel. You, know, you can have a half a dozen testers, they can all be doing test cases in different areas of the app, and you get through it fast. Um, they raise a defect, a developer can go off and fix the defect while they continue testing. Um, whereas performance testing, you've only got one environment, or load testing, I should say, you've only got one environment. It's kind of like peeling an onion, you don't find bottleneck number two until you fix bottleneck number one. Um, developers can't go off and reproduce your problem themselves, you've kind of got to work together. Um, and so all of the planning things that managers do, they go, oh, let's just throw more people at it. And that doesn't actually make it faster. Um, so all of their reflexes are wrong. And related to that, the third one is uh, because things happen serially, and you don't quite know how many defects are in something, how many bottlenecks are we gonna hit, and you actually don't know you know, what the root cause of something is. So that part where you do defect remediation or tuning or whatever, I've got no way of estimating how that how, how long that takes. So project managers get very, you know, testing's gonna take this long. Go, well, you know, it's gonna, I can tell you how long it takes me to execute my test cases. I can't tell you how long it takes for the application to be acceptable. It's just totally out of my, out of my control. And so for me, they're like top three things that I've really, monopolize the conversation. Um, I'd be really interested in, in hearing everyone else's. Just well, they, they, it's because testing is treated like a function point. So therefore they say it's 1.2.3 points per day. That's it. So therefore it's got a fixed time and fixed budget. I reckon PMs don't get environments. Ooh. Yeah, like the amount of you know percussive counselling sessions I've had with <laughs> <laughs> With PM saying, no, no, you really do need a database that's sized to production capacity or, or some bearing of. Well, and the weird thing is that there's one of you, yeah. and there's 20 functional testers, yeah. and they're in this tiny little one up environment, <laughs> and you have the biggest environment with the most hardware, yeah. and you've got one person using it, and they go, how can that be right? <laughs> Why do you need this? And the, you know, those guys are surviving on yeah. this. <laughs> No, like, I, was, I was having this conversation with Brady. I, I reckon it's the number one blocker for every contract in the last 12 years that I've worked mm -hmm. has been environments. Yeah. You know, either waiting for them, you know, sitting on the tarmac, just like waiting for the thing to arrive. Yeah, Good point. yeah massive problem. But now with that, no problem. <laughs> 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 Still What's your beef? Like, like, like say, I haven't used Loader on for 361 days, so maybe, maybe things have changed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm, testing oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm testing applications in the cloud now. I've just got an environment today. It's only two months late. Yeah. <laughs> because linked to that is the build process which isn't defined yet. Really give you that <laughs> so it's made it more efficient because it would have taken four months if they were physical servers. Quite likely. 
Yeah. Uh, I know we've spoken to that NAB, ex NAB guys here before, right? And NAB.com is in the cloud, right? NAB's on. So um, I think that's a big move for NAB to do that. Oh, and, and, the reason, and the reason why they've done that is because internally, using IBM and Telstra as their infrastructure hosting providers, Woo! would have taken the best part of three years to get you know, the same thing achieved, but they did it in five minutes. So Taking over six months so far to get my Red Hat environment standard Red Hat. Well, in fact, you should be lucky, because that's actually quick. <laughs> right? You still haven't got it? Still keep waiting. We're still looking into it. Okay. But that's how NAP works, right, internally. And that's why the whole environment's changing with the way people are going to testing and market sort of applications, getting out there and being agile and so forth. They're trying to get that done quickly. Because historically, the way that Telstra and IBM, no offense, screw NAP, right, sitting there waiting and just delay and delay and delay, because they're going to keep charging for it every time they delay. Um, suits their cause, it doesn't suit the customer. So I think the focus needs to be on the customer. Yeah. And, but and that's what it's all about. You're right. And I, don't disagree. I agree with you on that partially. <laughs> <laughs> it is because the people who wrote the contracts wrote the contracts to save money. Right? When they outsourced, they outsourced to save money, not to generate value. And the vendor who is delivering that service, whoever it might be, I don't want to name vendors because all of us are, are working for some vendor at the end of the day. The fact is, we need to make money as well. So the vendor ultimately decides, hey, where am I going to save money? Right? And that's that's how these things basically propagate. So the bottom line is, unless the culture changes to say, hey, I'm not outsourcing just to save cost, I'm outsourcing to get better value, which is something I've rarely seen, you're always going to have these issues. Yeah. Um, what, what else the managers don't get? The amount of effort required to actually do a proper job. They'll release code into production knowing it's faulty, but good enough. Um, I, I like your point about, so there's a Dilbert cartoon or something where you know, the pointy head boss, you know, like something that he doesn't understand, therefore must be really simple or easy to do. I, I guess it's like, um, I think there's a lot of, you know, just run, you know, write some scripts and run some tests. You know, how nice would that be? That's part of the problem with these two, is it? People managing the process have never done, yeah. never done this activity before. So how can they manage something so that they don't understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, the estimate estimate number of the hours required by the former tester to, to to work on that particular script writing and uh, testing. No, no one knows the the figures. Like the project manager may not know how long does it take. So they, they might not want to put performance testing into their project plan. They, they won't know like how how long does it take for one engineer or one performance tester to work on so many pages so they, they might not want to look into, into planning it. Um, I think software development really is one of those um, few areas where people are asked to provide really solid estimates on something that has never been done before. Mm -hmm. um, like, okay, we've never written anything at all like this. Um, Do you think the agile sprint methodology, you know, to a certain degree, does it work? I don't know. I'm not throwing it out there. It can. The big rule with agile is if you obey these really strict rules, you can take some shortcuts. And what they want to do is take the shortcuts without obeying the rules. Okay. Okay. That's yeah, you don't have to do docker. You don't have to do doco. You <laughs> can do <laughs> <you can laughs> <not, you laughs> <can, laughs> <you can, laughs> production. I was going to say that. That's why because you've got 100% automation. Man, just tell me. People, it's true. I think if we could, at some point, run a session for us, you know, agile, yeah, because yeah, everyone, yeah. even I keep being, uh, you know, a lot of people keep asking me, agile performance, agile performance. What does it mean? All agile projects have been on there's no documentation, there's no architecture, there's no solution, <laughs> everything is in someone's mind, right? I mean, it's just, it's just stuff. Right. And you right. say there might be strict rules, but I've never seen, even in the biggest companies, right? I haven't seen them being applied. Now, I'm sure there's value in doing it. I just think we probably haven't come across a successful agile program. If, you, if someone could talk about it at a future meeting, it would really help. Um, Michael wrote a good thing on it. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Yeah. Michael, probably yourself, at some point in the future. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> The other thing was uh, not up there. the same topic uh, was on tools for performance testing. Oh yeah, that's an important thing. Yeah. yeah, so it's, it's uh, when I say tools, it's basically managers sometimes don't realize as to... Sorry. 
let's take this. Probably it's more of uh, the the most nail biting thing, at least from uh, from manager's perspective, is convincing the client to uh, invest in the tool. To uh, now, a cost-benefit analysis yeah. is a is a tool good, or can we just get in some uh, fantastic developers and get them to write some custom scripts and rather just go down the route of doing manual testing? What are the pros and cons? So, I think that's something that managers still don't get, and I think they take the easier route of doing manual testing rather than investing on good commercial off-the-shelf products. Yep. Just yeah. on that, but the other way around, Nick and I worked at uh, this company that were throwing out a lot of money, yeah. and the senior manager said, we're going to do some performance testing, we've got a lot of money, therefore we need uh, Loadrunner and spend up big on Loadrunner. Our, our application was pretty much batch. Like, <laughs> 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 the managers kept hassling Nick and I, when are we going to buy it, when are we going to buy it? <laughs> Did you have an arrangement where you could get points on the side? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the HP rep here? Come on. <laughs> um, all right. We've got time for tip number two. Um, Michael, do you want to facilitate? 